Hello and welcome to the Election Chaser, live from the National Tally Room here in Canberra. I'm Craig Rucastle and tonight we'll be taking you behind the scenes of the election, giving you information you don't need to vote for people you don't want. I'm joined by the ABC's chief political commentator, Chris Taylor. Thanks, Craig. It's very good to be here. And as always, the ABC's election analyst, Julian Morrow. Good to have you back, Julian. Well, I only work once every three years, so I wouldn't miss this for the world. Well, just under three weeks until the polls close, we've got a lot of seats to get through, so let's get started. Julian, can we start with um, Kalgoorlie? Sure. Kalgoorlie's uh, Western Australian marginal, actually the largest electorate in the country, held by the Liberals by 2.1%, and as you can see, uh, I don't have any results there. No results? Nope. All right, well, let's go over to Canning then, shall we? Sure. Another key marginal seat in Western Australia. Uh, Labor must win that one, but look, I haven't got any results there either. Yeah, look, I think uh, one of the important things to keep in mind here is the polls do close later in Western Australia, so uh, maybe it'll pay for us to go back there a little bit later on. Yeah, good point, Chris. Well, let's come back to the eastern seaboard. Can we have a look at the New South Wales seat of Dobell? Sure. Dobell's another Labor marginal, held by Michael Lee by only 1.5%. Now, we've actually got Charles Firth out in the seat of Dobell at the moment. We'll just go to him. Charles, are you there? Charles, can you, are you there? Yes, yes, Craig. What's the trend at this stage out there in Dobell, Charles? Well, actually, uh, I only just arrived here, but I spoke to one guy on the way in, and he said that he might vote Liberal. Oh, interesting. Well, yeah. Julian, can we have some figures on that? Well, if we factor that in, uh, gee, I'm getting a massive swing against Labor. That's amazing. Oh, yeah, look, uh, on those figures there, I'm willing to call that for the Libs. Well, there you go, DeBell for the Liberals. The first seat called in election 2001. Julian, what are the implications of that on, the, on national scale? Well, if the DeBell result is repeated nationally, uh, this is how it'll look. Well, that is quite interesting. Chris, are you willing to call the election on this basis? Well, look, clearly some uh, very encouraging signs there for the Coalition, but I think this will be one of those elections that will come down to polling days, so uh, just a little too soon to call at this stage. All right, well, let's just look. Uh, you still think Labor's in with a chance here. I think let's, so. let's look at their positives. They've just released this GST rollback. What did you think of it? Well, I'll be interested to see how that goes down. I mean, uh, they promised to roll back the GST on gas and electricity, mm. but uh, not for two or three years. Well, I think it's going to play very well. I've spoken to a lot of people, and on the strength of GST rollback, they've all said that they're committed to voting Labor in two or three years. OK, well, APEC, another issue. Prime Minister's just got back today. Yeah. Do you think that by going to Shanghai, he's really left himself open to attacks from the opposition? Well, I don't think Peter Costello attacked him at all while he was away. I thought it was fine. Well, the whole issue of the Liberal Party leadership has already come into play, we've seen, in this election. But I think most of the media has been a bit wide of the mark, focusing on Peter Costello. I'm the only commentator who's noticed that John Anderson hasn't given up the search for Harold Holt. Yeah, very true. Well, on John Anderson and, of course, the National Party, they had their launch today in Tweed Heads. Mm. Chris, do you still think that they're under threat from One Nation? Oh, look, I think uh, One Nation will give them a little bit of a scare, perhaps. Uh, Pauline Hanson, the leader of One Nation, had her own campaign launch last week and kicked off with a very strong statement. I'll be looking forward to a long rest after the election, whether I win or I don't win. I'm really tired. Well, there's a real affirmation of dedication to uh, serve the electorate. Certainly is. Well, just two months ago, the Coalition looked dead in the water, but new polls now have them winning comfortably. Julian, can we just have a look at those polls and can you explain what happened there? Well, as you can see, Craig, uh, Labor was riding high on the polls a few months ago and then something happened, and look, I can't put my finger on it, but support for Labor really has softened. You know, clearly it's going to be a really big challenge for Kim Beazley and the Prime Minister has questioned his ability to lead. Does Mr Beazley have the ticker for the job? We sent Charles Firth out to investigate. A chaser ticker test. Subject, Kim Beazley. Weakness, food. Can the Labor leader survive a doorstop interview without needing a snack? Test item one, hot buttered corn. which Howard can respond. It's not... It is not that hard. <laughs> Fail. Test item two, a delicious drumstick. Fail. Test item three, wholesome French bread. Initial resistance, but what about if we add dip? Fail. The ticker test results speak for themselves. Result, no ticker. Kim Beasley, how can he control the country when he can't control himself? From the makers of the Bob Hawke Home Brewing Kit comes another amazing offer, the Black Rod. For centuries, the Black Rod has been used to mark the opening of Parliament. Now you can perform this outdated ritual in your very own home. I declare this barbecue open. Yeah. 
The black rod is handy all around the house. I now declare this block toilet open. It can even double as a home security device. Ow! 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 I now declare your head cracked open. Lovingly crafted from plastic and gilt, the black rod will add a sense of occasion to proceedings at your place. Ring today. I now declare our lines open. All you gotta do is smoke daily. I'm only smoking here because I, I'm having a drink and I can't go four or five hours without a smoke. The issues, the GST. The coalition believes the GST has simplified our tax system by creating less small businesses for the tax office to worry about. They also believe it's been good for big business, although admit a few people have had trouble with compliance. Labor has promised to change the GST to make it even more confusing. It's hoping its promised rollback on tampons and funerals will help woo the crucial votes of cremated females. Welcome back to the National Tally Room. Now, there's no question that this election really kicked off with the great debate. Chris, what did you make of that? Well, I think it was very good for Kim Beasley. I mean, you've only got to look at his body language here to see a, a message of strength and leadership. And if you examine the body language of Howard, I think he too sent a pretty clear message. And I know the worm really responded to that. I wouldn't mind just talking a little bit more about the great debate. I mean, uh, when you've been in the press gallery as long as I have, you start to pick up a few things. And uh, one of those things is politicians don't always say what they mean. Mm. There's a subtext underneath a lot of what they say. There's a very good example of this in the great debate. And just to make it a little bit clearer, I've just prepared this to tell you exactly what Howard was thinking. You mentioned something, Mr Howard, here about uh, a year ago, reconciliation was on the national agenda. We've barely heard a word of it from you or from Mr Beasley in the last couple of months. What's happened to reconciliation? Oh, I think quite a lot. Uh, I think the fact that the number of Indigenous people who are now in uh, apprenticeships and traineeships has quadrupled in the time that we've been in government, that the number of Indigenous people going to universities has gone up dramatically. ACOS and other top charity organisations today call for at least negotiations on a treaty. Is that going to happen? Well, not uh, uh, while I'm Prime Minister. How about you? Uh, well, could I just finish? I, I think a treaty is divisive. Now, I am not in favour of a treaty. We are one indivisible nation and our obligation is to try and give everybody uh, a decent place in the sun within Mr. the broad Mr. Australian Beans. nation. Welcome back to the election chaser here in the National Tally Room on what is politics night of nights. And it's an election which has been turned on its head somewhat since the Tampa affair. Oh yeah, I don't think there's any doubt about that whatsoever. I mean, the minute those asylum seekers arrived, it was a real breakthrough for Howard, I think. Well, since Tampa, a wave of refugee bashing has swept through national politics, with both parties weighing in. It's proven to be a real vote winner. With that in mind, I went down to Canberra to give the politicians another chance to exploit this volatile issue. We're here at Parliament House to give the politicians an opportunity to do what they really love to do. Bash a refugee. There are so many votes in it and it's really fun. We're just wondering if you wanted to get like 5 or 10% more, more votes in the next election. What do you reckon? You keen on that? Yeah, it'd be lovely. Well, what all you have to do is give a refugee a bash. That's the secret <laughs> to it, right? Oh, yes, yes, yes. It's yes. easy. Look, look, look at this. I've got One Nation preferences already. Just no, a little right like that. that. Right oh, that. come on. No, no, no. Come on, you, what, you're going to get somebody else? Did the Prime Minister say only he could do it? Do you want to have a go? No, I don't. You I, don't? I wouldn't bash a refugee. It's a very un-Australian response of yours, isn't uh, it? No, I don't think so. Would you like a go? Uh, uh, actually, this good-looking fellow doesn't look like a refugee. Oh, is he? Good looking refugee, that's not going to get you up in the polls. Just bash a refugee, look. Oh, come it's on. easy as anything. Yeah. And you can get 5 or 10% in the polls, what do you reckon? <laughs> look, give him a bash now, and we can change the laws later and make it so it's all right. You've got to take the opportunity up. Yeah. Huh? Look at this. Here's a refugee, here's something to bash him with. 10% in the polls, just as easy as that. Come on, a swinging bat no, for a swinging no, seat. No. See? Oh, easy as anything. And I do think that actually there are some people who regard what you're doing as funny, and I think that's very sad. There you go. Give him very a bash, clever. come on. Good on you. It's the Australian welcome. Good he on needs you, to be welcomed yeah. to this country. Come on, Mr. Baird. Look at him, he's invading our country. You just kind of come through like this, good leverage. Right. You give it a hard enough shot, we reckon you can get him to Nauru. Right. Come on. Okay, well, a bit of work from the back bench. Oh! <laughs> not me, I'm an Australian citizen. Fucking idiot. <laughs> so confusing, I know. 
Gee, Mark Latham really got stuck into you, didn't he? Yeah, he certainly did, didn't he? But don't worry, Mark, I won't be pressing charges during the campaign. Anyway, let's get on with the show. We've Sorry to a... interrupt you there, Craig. I should just warn everyone, we've had to tighten security here. Apparently, Natasha Stott to spoil has got wind. There's a new show on TV, and uh, we've just been advised she may try and break in and be a guest panellist in any second. I think we've got some security cameras on the scene. Yes, we're treating this very seriously indeed. We have asked the SAS to secure the area. In fact, the whole region, I believe, Craig, is on full stop to spoiler alert. But I do want to stress that it is important we don't panic. We will try and go on with the show. Let's let's move on to some seats. Well, can we have a look at some seats again, possibly? Yeah, sure. I wouldn't mind uh, having a look at the seat of uh, Mayo, if we could, which is held by Alexander Downer, sure, of course. Sure, yeah, that, that's an Adelaide seat. And, of course, the Downer family, very dominant in Adelaide politics. In fact, Alexander actually was given Mayo as a 21st birthday present. Now, didn't he almost lose that in the last election? Th that's right, to John Schumann, the Democrat candidate, and also a former member of the band Red Gum. Well, that's right. Very interesting result. Very odd. Mm. I mean, uh, John mm. Schumann was pretty much just a two-bit folk singer whose one hit was I'd Been to Bali too, And he ve polled very well with the Mayo electorate and uh, really took a big swipe out of Downer's vote. Mm. But this time Downer's going to cover that vote by adopting the same campaign strategy. But one of you said go away Never mind, we'll cope and we'll do it bilaterally that's the Australian way. Ooh, I wanna take you to the Philippines, Cambodia, Come on, pretty mama, and boy, Vietnam. And on that performance, he's gonna be very hard to beat. Yeah, thanks, Julian. Thanks, Chris. You're with the Election Chaser, live from the National Tally Room. And we're now joined by Charles Firth, who's been out in the bush. Charles, the bush vote may decide this election. That's right, Craig. During my listening tour of the bush, I spoke to a lot of people and quite frankly, they're sick of the way the media treats them. So I've compiled this special in-depth report. The bush. It's what makes part of this country so rural. But to most of us, it's a mystery. Tonight on Beat Up, we unpull the wool from the nation's eyes and ask the bush what's its problem. To find out, I went straight to an expert. If this batch of scones were Australia's problems, how many of them would be in the bush? It's a hard Devonshire tea to swallow. So let's go and have a taste. To get a real feel for the bush, it's best to go out there. In this harsh environment, people have to rely on good mates, camaraderie and mateship. But despite the good times, the bush still has problems with Telstra. The phones out here are so bad that people have to take desperate measures to communicate with the rest of Australia. Evening and welcome to Australia Talks, the program where the audience asks the question. Another sore point for bushies is dairy deregulation. Families like the Harrisons here have been hit hard. So why are farmers feeling the pain? Professor? I'm not sure, really. It's clear there are no easy answers, and the government's put the problem in the too hard basket. The sad thing is that the solution is so simple. All we need is a whole lot more of this, money. If the government could drupal its subsidy to the bush, then everyone out here would be a whole lot happier. And maybe then we can all get back to those simple country pleasures. Corona with a twist of lime, thanks mate. All I know is they shouldn't be doing 